thank you very much okay, uh, for for this uh, wonderful introduction. I want to thank Marina, my friend, uh, for introducing me to Kaki, and I, I want to thank everybody in Kaki. But I just want to take uh, two minutes off uh, just to remember, uh, just to think about so many of us who are struggling, including my parents who just tested COVID positive. Uh, and uh, I didn't want to cancel this talk uh, because I thought it would be too late and it would put everybody in trouble. But so many of my friends in Delhi and uh, and I can talk about at least 20 families which are close to me all going through a very tough time during this pandemic. I myself, emotionally, I'm, you know, I didn't want to cancel this talk. Uh, so please bear with me. If you don't see any kind of enthusiasm, I will try and do my best in terms of my talk. And I apologize if there's... Uh, create expectations, but uh, I'll try and do my best. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So you know, when when we talk about uh, when we talk about, and also I want to welcome the, 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 the lovely people. I mean, Sanjit Narakar is someone whom I'm a big fan. He's here. Rinki Ji is here, and of course, Feroza is here, also in the talk. So we've already got great scholars and many such scholars already present at this talk, but. You know, when we talk about women of early Indian cinema, and a lot of people ask me, uh, till when, which is the period are you going to cover till? And I think, I think it's so varied. And there's so many, when you really look at history and when you go deep inside it, and, and you, will, you will sort of wonder that uh, we hardly talk about these, these amazing women who, who played such an important part in not only in terms of uh, acting in films, but uh, in terms of the whole social strata, which they sort of projected, whether it was Durga Khote or whether it was Shanta Apte, whether it was the early, like Fatima Begum and, uh, and so many such women artists that, that somehow they seem to be forgotten and we need to sort of think back on them today. So let me, let me say a couple of points before we, you know, which is which is what is really important, that acting in films in the early 20th century was not considered a respectable profession and was actually a taboo for women. And the first female roles in both plays and films were enacted by men. And, and you know, we're going to have a lot of clips, some clips which people haven't seen before. And that is what is going to be really enjoyable. And then women had to fight for their place on stage and in front of the camera. And this is the story of some of the pioneering women who paved the way for women actors, directors, and producers of the film industry today. You know, when I joined as an assistant to Gulzar Saab uh, for a film called Lekin, uh, the only women there was in the, on the set, they used to be Dimple Kapadia, who was the heroine. And normally I would find Mummy Ji which was called Mamiji, with heroine's mothers. It was being absolutely rare if we see a, any other woman on the set. And today, when you look at the film industry, I think 50% of every film unit is, is filled with women. And that is what is amazing. I want to start with Bal Gandharv, you know, the famous Marathi singer and actor who was known for his playing female characters. And he's going to come back uh, when we talk about uh, Kamla by Gokhale, because she had a she had a great comment to talk about him. So he's really somebody who's who I really thought of when I used to be in Pune. I used to go and look at Bal Gandharv, you know, theater. I used to think about him. Then how he sort of used to play these iconic women roles, and with him on the on on that kind of a scene at that time, uh, it was difficult. Or someone like Dada Saab Falke, in his very first film, Raja Vishchandra, way back in 1913. And I'm, I'm, I mean, there's a debate about that film. Um, when we look at that film, uh, a lot of people say, is it the 1913 or is it the 1917? And I must tell you, uh, Falke made, the, made Raja Vishchandra in 1913. But while showing his films, you know, those, those, those times the films were made in nitrate. They had a highly nitrate and nitrate was highly flammable. So in one, in one of his 
ways when he was carrying it in his bullock cart, it is supposedly caught fire. And uh, he had to reshoot the film completely in 1970. And, you know, he couldn't find any women to do the role. And there is a mindset that he himself didn't want any women to do a role. Uh, there are a lot of theories to it, uh, which, which could be debated. But he found a cook who was, looked very feminine. And that was uh, by the name of Anna Salunke. And uh, he casted Anna Salunke as the role of Taramati in Raja Harish Chandra. And, and it is going to be interesting because in 1917, he made a film called Lanka Dahan, where he cast him as Ram and Sita. And I'm going to show you both those clips where, where same characters playing Ram and Sita. And of course, this is, of course, the famous Pond sequence of Raja Harish Chandra, uh, which Mega, my colleague, is going to play. And you can see in this uh, all the male characters acting as, as, as women. And there is Taramati who's in the pool. So let's, let's see this clip. And this is, of course, Lanka Dahan. Uh, please look out for where you see Ram and Sita together, Anna Sarunki. There it is. Both these characters are the same characters. One is playing Ram and other is playing Sita. You can see she's, he's, he's Sita. This is Anna Sarunki. And uh, that was Ram who came in that sort of now, when we, we talk about, here you can see a better image of both of them together. So, when you talk about men doing these women characters, but really the most outstanding character women was Saraswati Bai Falke, which I thought was, was such an important figure, that even though there were men acting in it, but you look at the role Saraswati Bai played with Asa Falke. She not only worked alongside her husband, uh, but helped him run his printing business. And, uh, you know, when, when he wanted to make his films, uh, she, she not only sold off her jewelry to, to make sure that he sort of goes to London, get trained, but also when he came back and started making his film, uh, she picked up the technology and used to mix film developing chemicals. And even, you know, that time, all the raw stock used to come without perforations. And she used to sit and perforate them. And she was such an emotional support uh, to, uh, to Falke. And, and, you know, I had the privilege of seeing some of her notes with, which P.K. Nair had, where I think without her, he would not have been able to make these, uh, these kind of films. Uh, which and he became the father of uh, Indian filmmaking. But the very first and the most iconic woman actress at that time also acted in Falke's film was Kamla Bai Gokhale and her mother Durga Bai Kamath. Now, Falke made a film called Moini Basmasu and that was in 1914. And if you look at it, that Durga Bai only worked in one film. But Kamla Bai acted in uh, about 35 films and, uh, you know, she's also, uh, her grandsons are still making, I mean, they're, they're still actors, Vikram Gokhale and Mohan Gokhale. But uh, what was iconic was that, uh, that uh, when Kamla Bai, uh, you know, she used to travel with her mother Durga Bai on theatre circuit and being homeschooled, she began acting at stage at the age of four. And when Falke casted Durga Bai as Parvati, Kamla Bai was casted as the lead as Mohini in Mohini Basmasu. And you know, it was filmed near Nasik, where Falke had set up his studio. And the mother-daughter could shoot at times since the theatre company Durga Bai worked in had temporarily closed. And the film was uh, an episode of Hindi epics, you know, Mohini Basmasu, because uh, you must have heard the story. Um, and she became what is called the, not only the first female actor, but the first female child actor. And Durga Bhai had to, 
battled a huge social stigma at, at every turn in the early days of a choice of career. And I liked what she said. And this is where Bal Gandharv comes. She said, no one encouraged a girl to take up film acting as a career. We faced fierce opposition, particularly from actors who were playing female on the stage. We were their first natural enemies. They hated us. Some companies would actually not have women performers as a matter of policy, like Bal Gandharv. He wanted my husband to join the company for major roles, opposite his female roles. And when my husband accepted only on the condition that myself and mother should also be taken in the company, Bal Gandharv refused. So if you really look at the history of early Indian cinema, you would call that it was virtually impossible for women to really act in films. But something very interesting happened in the turn of the thing. As uh, we were not able to cast women in the thing, J.F. Madden, he was uh, the first movie mogul from Bombay and he, he traveled all the way to Calcutta because as you know, Calcutta was the seat of the British Empire. And he became what is called the first movie mogul of Indian cinema. And he built a vast distribution, exhibition and production unit. You know, at one point, he owned over 127 theatres across uh, the whole British India. I would call it from Burma to Ceylon, you know, in the, those days. And uh, they also produced films. And he introduced, very interestingly, um, Italian, a lot of Italian actors, but also responsible for producing the first great female star of Indian cinema, Patience Cooper. What are these marks? I'm not the first great female star. The, the, now, you know, if we have to understand that. Till silent era, you will see a lot of foreigners and Anglo-Indians coming in because it was a silent era. The dialogues didn't matter. And when you didn't have women to act in films, uh, it paved the way for these women uh, to sort of um, get a career into the film. And when the talkies came in, in the 30s, that is when they, become, they became, uh, you know, they, they couldn't speak dialogues. And that is when we had to get back women, strong women characters who came back to do in films. But Patience Cooper was an Anglo Indian from Calcutta and could be described, as I said, the first great female star. And, uh, you know, she had an unbelievable uh, uh, career. She, she was also the first woman to play double roles in, in cinema. She played twin sisters in, in a film in 1923, as early as 1923, called Patni Pratap. And she acted as a mother and daughter in a film called Kashmiri Sundri. And uh, Cooper, you know, she acted in about 40 films and she retired in 44. And uh, what was described of her is that she had a very Hollywoodish look, her distinctive Anglo Indian features, dark eyes, sharp features, ebony hair, light skin tone. And it allowed uh, the cameramen and technicians. Uh, with important technique of eye level lighting and achieve a very similar kind of feel what the silent era uh, people could, you know, experiment with. Now, it took a while for acting in films to attract women from the Hindu and the Muslim households. However, Jews and Anglo Indians were not bound by the same codes of tradition and soon became stars of silent era. They perceived mostly ethnic ambiguity and lack of religious limitations, which meant that Indian Jewish actresses were able to embody roles previously, which was untouched in Indian films. You know, Indian Jewish actresses portrayed women who openly flirted by, flirted, flirted with men, drove cars, had jobs, lived life of luxury. And I can talk about Ruby Mayes, uh, Solochna, who was, you know, Ruby Mayes was her actual name, but she was, she was, uh, they changed her name to Solochana, or Florence Ezekiel became Nadira. Susan Solomon became Firoza Begum. 
uh, Esther Victoria Abraham became Prabila. Now, Sanochana, you know, she was known as a very fashion icon. Prabila was known for her stunts, roses, persona, Narira's portrayal of the educated, fierce, and modern Indian women. Uh, these are the really the iconic uh, women who played such a crucial role in the early Indian cinema. Now, Sulochana was someone who was working as a telephone operator when she was approached uh, by Mohan Bhavnani. Uh, he used to run Kohinoor uh, Film Company. And it is rumored that she was at one point earning more than the governor of Bombay. And she owned the latest of her cars, like Chevrolet. Look at, look at this photograph of hers. Way back in, this is from a film called Wildcat of Bombay. And uh, just look at her, uh, the stunning photographs. And she was awarded the Dasa Falke Award. And, uh, and in Wildcat of Bombay, she played eight different roles from a Hyderabadi gentleman to a blonde bombshell. Can you believe it? Eight different roles way back in 1927. And uh, just amazing, you know, that, that people hardly talk about these great women. You know. Then the other important uh, stalwart was Esther Victoria Abraham or Pramila. She was a Baghdadi Jew. Uh, she worked as a teacher in a Jewish school in Calcutta. And when she was discovered, regularly played the vamp and did daring stunts. And she was also the winner of, uh, you know, uh, Miss pa Pageant, which was uh, organized by the local press. And she established her own production company in the 40s. And she went on to not only act, but produce over 16 films. And, and that, that's what I find very interesting is that many of these women went on to produce so many number of films and play such a pivotal role. Um, in 1930s and 40s, she acted in a series of films alternating between swashbuckling and stunt woman and vampish roles. Uh, you know, what is interesting is that people in those at times, in, in that early years, they, they were willing to accept you playing a vamp at the same time playing a swashbuckling or playing any other character which became stereotype in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. But in the early years, it was easy for women actors to move from one role and the other. And uh, interestingly, she went on to work even in Tamil films. And what is interesting is that she, at one stage, Prabhila used to go to Pakistan quite often. She even had an office in Karachi, which used to distribute films. And intrigued by her frequent visits, Moraji Desai, who was the chief minister of Bombay, had her wrongly arrested as spy. Um, and, uh, you know, she not only, you know, so she was, she was being followed and she was being, and she went on to do a role of that spy uh, in one of the films, which, which showed that, uh, that how she was chased by uh, the Indian, Indian intelligentsia at that time. Um, she was also, uh, very interestingly, she was not limited to be an actress and a producer. She also worked on the costumes and the set for the very second technical of film. Not the Mother India of Mehboob Khan, but the Mother India of Adesha Rinan. So she, she worked on the costumes, she worked on the sets, uh, she learned set designing and she uh, acted in her last film in, in 2006, as late as that, in uh, Amol Palika's film the, in, in 2006, in which she was 90, where she died. Um, now, just to give you a little insight into what was happening in the South, uh, because it's important to understand that, that the film industry actually came in the three port cities, as we know. Bombay, Calcutta, and Madras. And that is why we have lost so much of our heritage because, because three port cities had high humidity levels. If, films, if, if they're not looked after well, there was a chance of it getting lost and getting destroyed. And Calcutta, which was the initial seat of the British Empire, and a lot of people who do not know that there was a large number of, uh, of Hindi films being made bilingual there later in the 30s. And many of the great actors started their career from new theatres, Prithviraj Kapoor, Durga Khote, 
they all came from Calcutta down to uh, back to work in Prabhat and so so uh, or Prabhat to new theatres. They were they were constantly doing that before they started working here. But in the south, there was uh, there was a person by the name of Nataraja Gudalia. And again, they had this very similar problem where they, they couldn't find women actors. And uh, so he so casted an Anglo-Indian called Marian Hill, who with the screen name Vilochna became the highest paid artist of the silent era. And she became the first silent fil film actor uh, from the South India. Her, and by the screen name of Vilochna. But, uh, and she was People say she was paid more highly than the ones in Bombay or in Calcutta. So, Vilochana, and, and she, you know, she was one of a kind. So, many people casted her uh, again and again. And she, at times, she was doing four shifts in a day and, and a working woman, you know, and uh, very, very busy. So, so, while this was happening, one of the most important and someone whom we all know about and we talk about is Fearless Nadia. Uh, India's stunt queen, Mary, Mary Ann Evans, born in Australia. She came to India as a little girl and first film as a lead heroine was uh, with the Vadia's movie tone called Hunter Valley. And we have a clip from uh, one, of, one of her films. And over the next decade, we know Nadia went on to star in over 50 films like Diamond Queen, Frontier Male, Jungle Princess. And what is amazing is her performing of her stunts in every single film of hers, from swinging from chandeliers, jumping off cliffs, fighting atop. Um, you know, let's see a clip of uh, of of Maria, which is this is from a film called Miss Frontier Nail. I just love this. Um, I hope we have a long clip on this so we can enjoy this clip. Yeah, and all the stunts have been done by her. You know, on, on it, it, it doesn't play as well as we expect, but you can see on she's on top of the train bashing up those goons and all her stunts was just amazing. Now, you know, kissing was not a taboo in Indian films in the 1920s and 1930s. And uh, even when you look at somebody like Lalita Pavar, and I was talking about a film called Gallant Hearts, um, Laita Babar said to have done a kissing scene in the early 20s when she kissed her co-star without, you know, without any inhibition. And if you look at Throw of Dice or Zarina, uh, where Zubeda and Jal Merchant kiss depending anywhere between 34, 42, 80, 82 kisses in a film. Karma, you can see, which is the longest kissing scene between Devika Rami Rani and Iman Shuroi, or Martin Varma kissing scene. Um, I think we have a clip. Do we have a clip of that we could play? Yeah. Which is the famous clip from Devika Rani and Imanshu Roy's Karma. This particular scene can go on for four minutes, but I want to show you, this is a very rare film. It is Martand Varma, the first, the only surviving silent film uh, of, uh, of uh, South India. And this is a Malayalam film, which is silent. And you can see it way back in 1931. Uh, you can see this clip, uh, what was going on in, in South India at that time.
Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the very first woman to actually turn into production and direction. Uh, very interestingly, her name was Fatma Begum. And she's the first women director. Uh, she was married to Nawab Saab of Sachin, uh, princely state near Surat in Gujarat. And she set up the, what is called the Victoria Fatima Begum uh, Film Company. Um, and she went on to produce. Now, what is said is that she and her three daughters, Sultana, Shehzadi and Zubeda, um, Zubeda, of course, went on to act in the first Indian talkie, which doesn't exist in 1931. But they ran away from the palace because, because they wanted to act in a film. And they landed up in Bombay. And it's just amazing. Begum, Begum Saiba running away from the palace. Because she wants to be a filmmaker. And her three daughters want to be actresses. And all three went on to work on films. Um, and Fatima Begum is the first, she directed a first feature film, Bulbule Paristan, in 1926. And that film doesn't exist too, but uh, neither does a lot of films of these three, uh, Sultana, Shehzadi and Zubeda. Zubeda, of course, was married to the Maharaja of Dhan Dhanrajgir. You can see the Dhanrajgir house, which is there. And uh, she acted in Alamara and she went on to act in several films. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have a film of Alamara. But I have a clip of another dynamic woman who spoke about seeing an Alamara in 19... Um, when it had just released, which is Sitara Devi. So let's see that clip. You see, as an archivist, I refuse to believe Alamara is permanently lost. <laughs> जब रिलीज हुई थी क्योंकि मास्टर बिठल का बहुत नाम था मास्टर बिठल उसमें हीरो थे जुल्लू भाई मां बनी थी मोती एक एक्ट्रेस थी पहले वो वैम बनी थी उसमें पृथ्वीराज जी थे और रिलीज हुई और पहले ऐसे था कि पिक्चरें जब रिलीज होती थी तो लोग काफी देखने आते थे बड़ी भीड़ होती थी पूरे कलकत्ते में कोहराम मच गया ऐसा हुआ कि अरे वो हीरो बोलता है वो बोलती है वो बोलता है ये कैसे हो सकता है ये तो हम लोग साइडेड मूवी देखते थे जिसमें कि जैसे जो भी सीन लड़ाई झगड़ा ये वगैरह वगैरह होता था तो टाइटल आता था जैसे उसने कहा कि तुम यहाँ क्यों आए जाओ यहाँ से तो टाइटल आए कि तुम यहाँ से जाओ तो पूरा हॉल पढ़ता था एक गूंज सी आवाज आती थी क्योंकि सब पढ़ते थे तो आप वो मालूम हुआ कि तो टॉकी है तो किसी को बिलीव नहीं हो रहा था पहले सब सब चाहते थे देखने को औरतें भी बच्चे भी सब कि ये आवाज कैसे आती है नाउ इफ यू इफ यू रियली डिवाइड द द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री आई वुड से द कॉटेज इंडस्ट्री पीरियड ऑफ द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री वाज फ्रॉम 1913 टू 1924 uh, and from studio era would start somewhere between 1920s to 1940s. And uh, then, of course, uh, since then to the present time, the star became the main commodity. Now, if you look at Falke's relationship, uh, you know, if you just to understand how films were being made, Falke may have started relationship between finance and film by raising money from traditional film sources, uh, a relationship that lasted much of the first decade. But he did not pay any attention to distribution and exhibition. And when Adishan Adani and the Bombay producers reacted to this, uh, which is what led to the rise of the studio system. And the studio system uh, came about, uh, you had the great Prabhat studio in Pune, you had new theatres in Calcutta, you had the great Bombay talkies uh, in Malad, in Bombay. And this was a time when large filmmaking companies uh, controlled every department of the process, including the theater that been the film. Uh, the studios functioned very similar to what the Hollywood uh, 
studios were while uh, and the actors who were kept on payroll so they were they were signed up by the studio and they were paid by the thing and amongst uh, the uh, bombay studios were minerva movie tone built by suram modi ranjit movie tone built by chandu lal shah wadia movie tone by irani and just to understand that when imperial uh, which is on kennedy bridge which is where adarsh irani made his uh, uh, alamara uh, master vithal uh, was cast as the role and uh, you know he apparently was from a different studio and they filed a suit against him and his lawyer was mohammad ali jinnah who fought for him uh, over the years and that was a very interesting aspect of it um, also if people you know kennedy bridge is right here whenever you're passing kennedy bridge look out on the right for a beautiful those two big rain trees you know it's it's beautiful rain trees which have still still stood the time and uh, there are still whenever i pass through i see the studios of adarsh irani which was also where the first irani film was made uh, what had happened is that he was shooting um, for alamara and the and the farsi you know the persian film they said that as you have the studio you have the you have the background actors we will get the art, artist and the and alamara doesn't exist but lor girl which is the first farsi film which is in iran that exists even today uh that just speaks that how they have preserved and how we have preserved uh, our heritage but i want to talk about some of the iconic women of the studio system and one one of course uh, is devika rani uh you know she was the great grand niece of of rabindranath tagore she was educated in britain um, she studied in a boarding school in britain and with a chance meeting uh with himanshu roy london uh they joined and hands together and they worked uh in, in at the german film industry especially with papst and fritz lang and inspired the, by the methods of filmmaking uh she also was she also enrolled herself as a short filmmaking course at uh, a, at a studio in berlin and she learned various aspects of filmmaking and when they returned uh to india you already saw a clip of karma uh himanshu roy and devika rani set up the bombay talkies way back in 1933 at malad and uh karma was the first film they did together and uh, i mean 1934 actually bombay talkies was established and and bombay talkies is was the launching pad for the future actors what is called the really iconic actors of indian cinema whether it was ashok kumar leela chitnis yus dilip kumar raj kapoor madhubala mumtaz you know they they all were were, were sort of cast in films of bombay talkies and all the iconic you know stars came out of bombay talkies and devika rani went on to form a hugely successful pair with ashok kumar um, of all the films there's a lovely lovely uh, by one of my favorite songs is from achut kanya uh, which i always love watching them ashok kumar it just looks like as if they're as if they've not gone away they they're still there uh, this beautiful trees of of around malar they shot this song and uh, let's hear the song uh, and and then i can talk about mai dal dal ud jaau nahi pakdai mai aau mai dal dal ud jaau nahi pakdai mai aau tum dal dal mai paat paat bin pakde kabhi na chhod jab tak ho mere तुम डाल डाल मैं पात पात बिन पकड़े कभी न छोड़ू बन बन बो बन 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 बन
this was composed by by a woman called Saraswati Devi. The music was composed by Kurshid Minochar Homji, India's first female music director, who went on to work. Uh, she had to change her name. Um, she came from a very educated middle-class Parsi family, and she, along with her sister Manik, they were disciples of uh, of Pandit Bhatkande. And uh, yet, so terrible was the stigma of the film world that when the sisters sang for Bombay Talkies, the film called Jawani Ke Hava, the entire Parsi community rose against them. The Parsi community paper launched a vicious campaign against them. And uh, not only so, Himan Shuray and Devika Rani was threatened to avoid condemnation. Kushid was forced to change her name. And that was not done by her, but, but, but the fact that she was forced to change her name to Saraswati Devi, and her sister Manik became Chandra Prabha. And she, by, by the efforts of Devika Rani, who stood by her, she became one of the most important uh, music composers. And you know, in those days, you face tough competition from the new theatres, because new theatres had Segal and Kanan Devi and the iconic, you know, and she was holding the mantle here at Bombay Talkies at that time with her films like. Achut Kanya, Jeevan Naya, Durga, Navjeevan, Azad. Um, what an amazing period of people uh, we had at that time. Um, you know, in, in my, sorry, yeah. In my last trip um, to Calcutta, I went to see uh, where was Jaddan Bhai's Kotha. Uh, because everybody used to say Jaddan Bhai began from, from Calcutta. A woman, Nargis's mother, Sanjay Dutt's grandmother. But what an iconic woman. I mean, she came from a quota. She, she, she went on to start a banner, direct films, act in films. It was just an amazing journey. Jatan Bhai was the daughter of, uh, of a famous courtesan, you know. And she grew up in Calcutta where she was trained under classical music. And, uh, you know, she became even more famous Tabhaif than her mother. And she used to perform in, in the courts of Bikane, Jodhpur, Indore. And then she decided to come uh, to Bombay to, to start a career. And uh, she started her own production company called uh, Sangeet Films. The company produced Talashe Haq in 1935, which she acted and composed the music and introduced her daughter Nargis as a child artist. And in 1936, she acted in a and directed our own another film called Madam Fashion. Just amazing, you know, that that coming from that kind of background, that passion, that zeal, and they went on to do that. But to me, the two iconic ladies who I think mark uh, the really the pillars of what happened in the talky era is is Shanta Apte and Durga Kote. Uh, now. 1930s became the decade of singing stars like what I said, Kanan Devi, Kundal Lal Sengal, and Shanta. You know, she brought a change in the static style of song renditions in her film. And uh, she got a break when she played a supporting role in, in Amrit Manthar in 1934 in a V. Shantaram film. Then she acted in Dunya Namane. And, uh, you know, she was, uh, it was in 1930s when Film India criticized her for acting in a film, uh, Baburao Patel, you know, he was, was a ferocious journalist and fearless to the core. And uh, he criticized her and, uh, and he wrote nasty things about Shanta Apte. The day following the release of the issue of Film India, the market, Shanta, Ra, Shanta Apte entered the office of Baburao Patel with a whip in her hand. She whipped Baburao Patel to the utter horror of, of all those present. For one, Shanta Apte's whip became mightier than the sword pen of Babura Patel. And the most interesting part of the story is that Babura Patel published the whipping story in his magazine. And, uh, you know, she was known for, uh, she had several disputes for the studio, even went on a hunger strike to protest the pressures of Prabhat studio to let her out on an exclusive contract. She's written a wonderful autobiography if you get a chance to read it. It's in Marathi, but it's in English it says, should I join the movies? In which she talked about the structure of the film industry and an actors placed in it, and especially a woman playing 
roles, such pivotal roles in that time, uh, with Apte examining the people who made up the power structure in the industry and warning of the pitfalls of an artist. Of course, Shandaram had a very uh, different, but here's a lovely uh, visual from a film called Kunku Dunya Na Mane, which you can see. It was the biggest success of her career. Of course, one of my favorite and somebody whom I really looked up to right through uh, when I was a student at the Film Institute and, um, and always uh, you know, read her autobiography, the most iconic. And in 2000, in 2000, in a millennium issue in India today, named her as among the 100 people who shaped India. So here's Durga Kote, one of the most pioneering women in Indian cinema. And she was one of the first women from a respectable family to enter the film industry and thus breaking a very big social uh, taboo. Um, and, you know, she, she, in her popular memory, the name Durga Kote would bring to mind a um, lot of people with Mughle Azam. She played the role of Joda Bai. Uh, but it was her work uh, in, in the films in New Theatre and Prabhat, films like Amar Jyoti, King of Ayodhya. You know, she studied at the Cathedral and John Connor High School in, um, in Bombay and did her BA from St. Xavier's College. She got married as a teenager and by the age of 26, Durga Khote was widowed mother with two young sons, Bakul and Harin, which many of you would know. She had to see work in films to support their children. And it was uh, Shandaram who decided to cast um, Durga Bai as she was known in the industry in this uh, remake of Raja Harichand's story called Ayodhya Cha Raja in Marathi and Ayodhya Cha Raja in Hindi. And uh, one of the most dynamic films, I think, which she has performed and where I saw her character was Amar Jyoti. But I want to just read the lines of what she wrote in her autobiography. Uh, she says, once in a while, I wonder what I would have done if circumstances had not pushed me into films and if the Khote fortunes had not gone into decline then my identity would have been nothing more than a daughter-in-law of an illustrious family. And that just speaks uh, everything. Those lines just speak everything. But let's have a look at uh, Amar Jyoti and Durga Khote in this very powerful scene. वो भी एक पति नामधारी नादा नादली की मिलकियत है इसलिए वो रानी मेरा बेटा मुझसे छिनवा देती फिर भी मैं चुप रहूं मेरी और तमाम औरतों के दुश्मन उस रानी से मैं क्यों न बदला लूं इस बदले के लिए क्यों न जानी बनूं जरूर बनूंगी और उस रानी के जरे अहकर या चक्कर को खिलाने वाले ऐसे बदले से मुझे क्या उदय पर बैठकर बेइंसाफी करने वाले इस दुर्जे से मैंने बदला लिया बदला ले लिया यही मेरी सबसे बड़ी बहादुरी है आई वांट टू एंड बिकॉज़ आई नो द स्टॉक इज गेटिंग लॉन्ग बट आई जस्ट वांट टू एंड विद वी हैव गॉन टू द साउथ वी हैव गॉन टू बॉम्बे बट वी कांट लीव आउट कानन देवी फ्रॉम बंगाल शी वाज द मेलोडी क्वीन एंड द फर्स्ट लेडी ऑफ बंगाली सिनेमा द मोस्ट वाज वाज हर डिटरमिनेशन एंड 
She mentions in her ma- in her memoirs that how her first marriage uh, with Ashok Mehta, the son of the most eminent educational Bengal, broke down due to society's reluctance to accept and recognize her as a dignified member, and how she fought her way through and fought her way through to to find a place and uh, have a long-standing career. career. Uh, there are many, many such women in this early Indian cinema and we can go on and talk about it. But I want to play this clip for you. Uh, a song which she's singing with my ideal K.L. Segal, Kundan Lal Segal. Uh, it's just a fantastic rendition. You can just see this. Yeah. Hey, kya koi suhavan sapna Dhan maya sab apna apna Hey, kya koi suhavan sapna Dhan maya sab apna apna Nahi, nahi khuli raak me Nahi, nahi, nahi khuli raak me Rab na kaha sama yeah so uh, yeah these are the remarkable women uh, they've they've inspired me they've inspired a whole generation what we see is is the change after these women left they became a stereotype women roles and the stars became important in the 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s we saw the male dominance of it but these are the women who played such an important role in early cinema paved the way for us and i i just could cover i would say 30% of what should have been covered there's so many women i have left out but i hope uh, there's already so much of information i hope you all enjoyed the talk thank you very much thank you so much that was uh, an absolutely amazing I, I you know like everyone else i don't didn't know where time went because it was such a beautiful uh, talk so informative and so well uh, put together uh, first of all I think I join everyone here uh, who's in the audience to wish uh, your family uh, you know, good health and a rapid recovery and uh, also good health for everyone in the audience who's near and dear ones are struggling. And I know that's true for so many people. So um, a prayer for everyone to get well really soon and for these terrible times to be behind us. Uh, and thank you very much for joining, even though you, know, uh, you are facing such circumstances. Thank you, Mary. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going on to the questions that um, the audience has asked. Uh, Gauri has asked, why only Jews? Because I know that you mentioned a few Jew ladies in the beginning who uh, were, uh, through the, especially through the silent era. So why only Jews, she says. Uh, why, why Jews only? I, uh, you, you know, it was, it was not, not that uh, it was... Uh, that they agreed to work on films. That's all. It was easy to get there. Uh, even even uh, even Sulochna, uh, because she worked as a telephone operator, and the Anglo Indians and the mindset of Indians were uh, that they were more flirtish. They were more, you know, they, that's the mindset. So I think it just so happened yeah. that, uh, that uh, they were that around. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were around, and it was easy to get there. There wasn't any. It was very difficult to cast somebody. That's why Durga Kote was. Really, the most prominent from a black family coming in in films. Yeah. So, there's a comment from Sucharita Apte saying that uh, according to her, Mohan Gokhale is not related to Kamla Bai Gokhale. His father was a journalist and editor of Swarajya and a well, they two Mohan Gokhale. Uh, so, okay. the, the Mohan Gokhale, this is Vikram Gokhale's brother, Mohan Gokhale. This is oh. the, not that Mohan Gokhale. It's, it's the, uh, uh, there are two different Mohan Gokhale's. Okay, that, that clarifies. In fact, uh, somebody called Vishakha has also mentioned that they'd love for, um, uh, you know, uh, Khaki to uh, screen some of these uh, movies. Of course, we'd like to work with you and see how uh, we can do that together. Right, right, sure. 
And uh, uh, Rinki Bhattacharya has mentioned about Esther Victoria saying that uh, the Bimal Roy uh, Memorial honored her in 1997. I think uh, that's great that they got the recognition. A lot right. of compliments from various people, uh, you know, about the whole putting together of the clips and so on. Birina has mentioned that as well. Uh, Farooq had a question. Is the Zubeda you mentioned the character on which uh, the film Zubeda by Khalid Muhammad is based? No. So that's, that is Khalid's mother. Uh, so, so she was, uh, she was, uh, she was living in Jodhpur. Okay. Uh, this is Zubeda uh, who was married to Maharaja Dhanrajgir. Uh, okay. if, if you've been to Indigo Delhi or if you've been to Yacht Club, opposite that, you see that big building called Dhanrajgir Mahal. Uh, yeah. And she was married to the Maharaja of Dhanrajgir. Uh, if people don't know, Humayu Dhanrajgir's mother. And uh, she, she was a very prominent, uh, she was uh, Fatima Begum's daughter. She came from, uh, so she totally different. Uh, and uh, she, she worked in silent era. And her basic important film she did was, uh, was Alamara. Uh, apart from many other films. But Alamara was the first sound talkie with, which uh, she worked on and the film doesn't survive. And then, uh, yeah, so she then married Nawab Sahib. Of course, uh, Rajni Agarwal has mentioned that she uh, loved the songs that were composed by Khurshid and acted by Devika Rani. She's mentioned that she's seen the play Devika Rani by uh, Lilith Tube. Yes. So is that a true re representation of um, Devika uh, Rani? Well, I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the play. Uh, there's also a book which has come out on Devika Rani. Which, right. uh, which uh, actually was quite an eye opener for me because uh, when I read the book, I realized the the, the kind of uh, uh, relationship she went through with Himanshu Roy. It, it was it was uh, she went through a lot through that relationship, and she still pulled through and survived. And uh, you know, uh, I happened to uh, it, it was so interesting that when I was doing a research many years ago. Um, Devika Rani used to have a secretary called Guru Swami way back in Bombay Talkies. And Guru Swami later on went on to be uh, forming a company with Guru Dutt and they went on to produce Piyasa, Kagas Ke Pool, all those great films. But Guru Swami's children gave me a lot of material to preserve and, and through that I got to know, I mean, we've heard about Ashok Kumar, how he got launched uh, onto, uh, onto the screen when he, when he was working there. But Dilip Kumar and the other actors, even Devanan, you know, got a break through Bombay Talkies. Uh, but it was all the way Devika Rani used to used to handle the things. I mean, it was just amazing that she she's actually the first Indian lady of Indian cinema in that sense. She's she's responsible for so many people's career and so many great directors. You know, we we've had over the years. Mm -hmm. It's all thanks to her. Amazing. Amazing. Um, somebody's uh, mentioned, Navpreet, Navpreet has mentioned that Jadan Bhai's house in Calcutta where Nargis was born still exists, I believe. Uh, you mentioned Yes, I, I, I just went there hmm. and I went and saw that. It's, it, somebody else lives in that house, hmm. but that's where, actually, you know, Calcutta was, is interesting because uh, if you've been to the Dharantala area, uh, that is where Madden set up uh, hit their movie theaters. And that is where cinema was really existing, you know, all the big companies were all there. Uh, the distribution of new theatres used to be there. And that is where uh, all the film productions, film theatres, and many things uh, I was seeing myself, which Satyajit Ray was writing in his books and memoirs as a child, he used to go there. And that is the beauty about Calcutta, that when you, when you walk, everything, the time has stood still. You can find the same hoarding, you can find the same things, and you can find even 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 some of the uh, memories of these people, which look as if everything is stood still. So amazing. Yeah, Shivendra, Shivendra I had a question. Yes. Uh, who's playback? Who were the playback singers in the, the song clip you showed of uh, Devi Karani and Ashok Kumar? Would you have any idea? Uh, yeah, I. Uh, it was it was sung by. Uh, uh, I'll have to just recheck that. I'm not because sure. yeah. uh, you know Ashok Kumar's playback was his cousin Arun Kumar, who gave the music for my father's Parinita. Right. Oh, 
he used to be uh, his first cousin right he composed the music for parinita he used to be ashok kumar's playback uh, voice right i don't know that whether that is this is the same but it didn't sound like and the female voice also was quite uh, you know quite a uh, you know, new i haven't heard it what the amazing the way you end with kanan devi's dance oh my god that is fantastic I think I think she's been uh, she's been uh, highly neglected uh, in uh, many ways. Kanan Devi, you know, people don't speak much about her. Oh my God, she was an iconic figure. I mean, I have a wonderful meeting with. I, I mean, I've had I've had actors telling me uh, in their young age, uh, even Shomitra Chatterjee telling me, or or Madhubi Mukherjee telling me, yeah. uh, her, her presence and her feeling and and, yes. and the command expected. And, yes. and that is what Ricky Ji, which I see that even your father, yeah. if you really look at in the fifties, he was one of the rare directors who I mean, had yeah, very yeah, strong yeah. women, women, women uh, yes. uh, characters. Yes. Actually, Kanan Devi, yeah, Kanan Devi gave me a compliment saying your father made me look the most beautiful. I am not that beautiful. But it was the father who made me look so beautiful. That was such a lovely way of saying, you know. Yeah, yeah. He had so much regard for. Them. Wonderful. Thank you, Shivendra. This was a complete eye opener, and I hope we have more such sessions. I know. I wish I could do it. I could do better because because I was not. I was very worried because I was not in that. I know. State of please, please, please and, uh, get get well soon. And I hope we can do something on my father for the khaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Hello, the khaki. Yeah. yeah. They they can do something with my father. Okay. With you. I do have a few more questions. Sanjit Narvikar. If I can come in at some hand. point. Yeah, Sanjit uh, Narvikar has raised hand, so can we have it? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. How, yeah. How are you, sir? Uh, hi, Shivendra. How are you? I am fine. Uh, lovely talk. Uh, but that reference which Rinki made uh, to the song from Achut Kanya. I don't think there yes. was playback at that time, and I remember the Dada Muni saying that they used to literally yes. take one line from different takes and put the song together. And okay. uh, I think playback must have come in much later in the mid thirties. That is around thirty six, thirty seven. So playback came in thirty. See, it came with uh, Nitin Bose's brother Mukul Bose from a film called Dhub Chow, and it came yes, actually. Yes. You are you are right. You are right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the Achut Kanna song was uh, Ashok Kumar and Devi Karani singing. Right. I think you are right. So, Sanjay, you are. Yeah. 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 Because you know what used to happen is, which is very interesting for people to know, uh, is that the band of musicians and everybody used to be right next to you I when know. you're performing. <laughs> yeah. And, and if the camera moves, yes. uh, you had to move with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is a so scene nice in Chandram's Army where they have actually shown how this used to work. You know, yes, yes, if you yes. remember that song, "Prem ka Bangla, Prem ka ye." Prem ka Bangla, Prem ka ye. They are actually nice shown. There was just one more thing I wanted to say, Chevendra, um, and that is the genealogy of Kamla Bai Gokhale is her son Chandrakant Gokhale and then his son Vikram Gokhale. Yes, and uh, Kamla Bai's other son, Lalji Gokhale. If you remember, I'm sure you do remember, was a very well-known yes. exponent of the tabla. Uh, yeah, Lalji of course. Gokhale. And yes, Chandra Lalji Gokhale, 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 Gokhale was a son of a very well-known Marathi actor, and his son Vikram Gokhale. Of course, everybody knows. Yeah, but sir, haven't you written uh, on them extensively? You, yes, you I have written. written. But my yes, friend sir. Reena Mohan also has made a, a longish film yeah, on so Kamla Bai Gokhale. Like yeah, yeah. I would, I would like to tell everybody that you can watch this wonderful. Uh, from she's from the institute, like me. Lovely, she, yes. Beautiful. Uh, yes. Reena Mohan's uh, yeah. film on Kamla Bai Gokhale Kamla is available Bhai on Gokhale. YouTube, yeah. and 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 that is really an eye opener film. You must see it for yeah. even at that age. You should yeah. see how powerful oh. she. Is. Yeah. What a feisty woman she was, you know. Yeah, you can imagine what she would have been at that time. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have a question okay. for you. Uh, right. We have a question holding on from Dipinder, but before that, we've talked so much about songs. How did songs get to be such an important part of the Indian film industry? Yeah. So, 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 so Sanjeev Navikar is also here. I would just like to say, see, we came from a very uh, came from a theatrical parsi theater kind of background where songs 
used to be performed. Actually, you know, one of the big drawbacks of Indian cinema was that we, the earliest cinema was the interpretation of what was happening in our plays and what, what was happening in our theater. And they, they would be often these songs which used to come. And various people played a very key role. And there was a film called Indra Sabha, which had something like 76 songs, you know. And they used to depict what was on the, on the stage. So stage and the theater uh, was, was parallelly, like on the screen was not much of a difference, you know. Uh, and if you look at Jeff Madden, he wrote plays, but he also said they, they will be adapted for films. So they were done for both. So what they did was they used to take the, some of the same cast and same kind of story, same songs. And, and, and actually speaking, uh, people keep talking about traditions and things. Songs to me were were kind of a kind of a break from films, a break from seriousness. It is exactly like how we have a comedy track today in our films. It, they were added because because to give relief to the audience. But we didn't need songs. I mean, there is no set per rules. But it became such a part of our of our uh, Hindi film tradition and Bollywood tradition that now films without songs were looked upon as art films. You know. So there's a comment from Dipinder that uh, we've not covered Lahore pre uh, party. Yes, you're, you're very right. Uh, Pancholi Sahib of Lahore, uh, that's a whole big topic. And a uh, lot of lot of people I knew, Pran Sahib and Om Prakash and all of them came from Lahore. And Lahore was a very flourishing industry. And uh, later on in the 40s, they made films like Ratan, which was, uh, which was really popular. We should have covered Lahore. And I've had, uh, you know, one actress who's still there and who talks deeply about Lahore is Kamini Kaushal in her 90s, 93, 94. And she came from Lahore. So we didn't cover Lahore. We just tried to cover the most eminent people around uh, in that time. There are many stalwarts uh, in the obvious, but we would need a whole, Lahore would need a whole lot of, uh, you know, a lecture by itself. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a part two to this talk at another yeah. time where you will share with us about Lahore and other things that we might have missed right. out. Uh, Rushi yeah. Rani has shared the link to the documentary for uh, Kamla Bai Gokhale. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Ajit Joshi's mentioned that Ashok Kumar is given credit as the singer for the song we were talking about, uh, the Devika Rani song. So that's uh, sorted. So um, I think uh, with that, we, we, you have a lot of compliments, of course, from people who absolutely loved uh, the talk this evening. And uh, since there are no more questions, I'd like to say um, thank you to you and thank you to everyone for being here. And uh, uh, all the best and thank stay here.